Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news as we discuss a big potential tactical switch from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now if you remember in the summer there was lots of discussion that Solskjaer favoured a more attacking midfield three with one holding midfielder and then probably more likely a Pogba and a Fernandez working together to be more attacking with Varane and Maguire meaning we could play a higher line and not have to play two holding midfielders and a lot of people were encouraged by this. It didn't happen, we stuck with the back six, the two pivots mainly McTomley and Fred and we've not seen a development on the way that we're playing football this season compared to last season. Now yet again international break big uh, set of bad results for Manchester United just before it and another growing feeling of rumour that Manchester United will switch it that Solskjaer is looking to change the way that Manchester United set up as he looks to you know rescue the season and potentially his job now the interesting thing is Lots of people are talking about a 3-5-2, a 5-3-2, that, you know, Varane literally played in one for France the other night, and Pogba played in that system as well. And obviously Chelsea do it, and a lot of clubs are doing it. So there is a big rumour at the moment that Oli may well go to a 3-5-2 a or a 5-3-2, mainly because he's never really wanted to drop Lindelof, obviously he's not going to drop Varane, and he's not going to drop Harry Maguire. Um, I don't think this will happen. I mean, I, I don't think this will happen. And I, I'll tell you for why I don't think it'll happen. And I'll show you straight away. If you're going to play a 5-3-2 or a 3-5-2, let's just imagine it's like that. Obviously, David De Gea goes in goal. Lindelof, Varane and Maguire in whatever combination he goes for. wan and Luke Shaw as your, full back, as your wing backs. Potentially, you could play McTominay and Pogba with Bruno. And then a front two of who I imagine would be Ronaldo and Rashford. Now, a lot of people say it'd be Ronaldo and Cavani. Maybe it would be, but I still think they're quite similar players. Um, I think they could work well together. But, you know, it, maybe Ollie, maybe look, I've, I've heard rumours that Ollie's looking at this. I don't think we're going to do it. I think we're going to see them more what he wanted to do in the summer. And I think we'll go back to that in a minute with the back four. But there's nothing wrong with playing a three, three centre-back or back five system, however it works. You know, when you haven't got the ball, you're a back five. When you have got the ball, your full backs become wingers. Um, it can make you quite expansive. We've seen it with international sides. We've seen it with Chelsea. I don't think Solskjaer is going to do this. I think there's two big reasons, really. One, it would be ridiculous to bring this in seven games into a Premier League season and to try and implement something new like this in the season would be a strike of massive desperation. And secondly, expanding that point, it would also be a stink of desperation because you've just basically changed your mind because you've had a few bad results at the start of the season and how weak would that be? Because if you look at that system, I mean, look, we're only finding place for Rashford because I think he wouldn't drop Rashford. I mean, a lot of people would say if you're going to play a front two, it should be Cavani and Ronaldo or Martial and Ronaldo because Cavani and Martial are number nines. So it shouldn't really be Rashford in that system. So if Rashford doesn't play in the front two, where are you going to play him? Left wing back, you can't play him there. He's not a number 10. And there ends the problem. You've got Mason Greenwood, Marcus Rashford, Jaden Sancho, Jesse Lingard, who just wouldn't work in this system. They're never going to work in this system. And, you know, Solskjaer's almost made it um, um, a hobby of collecting wide forwards. Sancho, Greenwood, Rashford. You know, you could argue Lingard plays there. Ahmad, Palestri. Um, Alanga plays off that, off that. Martial plays off there as well. To go and play a 5-3-2, which basically kills the need for wide forwards, I just can't see United doing it. So, look, I'm not a big fan of the system anyway. I don't really think it's one that United should be playing. I think Solskjaer would look at it because he could play Lindelof. But ultimately, what you do when you play three at the back, you're bringing Lindelof in to lose your wide forwards. So, I can't see it working. I'm sure that system would... Um, excite some people I'm sure it would do but but not for me I, I, I don't see it working and as I said the two big reasons one it would be desperate to do that in the season and secondly you know why have we just gone and spent 74 million on Sancho why are we so excited Rashford's coming back Greenwood's having a good season why, why would you why would you change a system that's going to limit their opportunities so I just don't see us doing that at all I think what we will see is a back four and a front four and a midfield too. And I think that's what we're going to see. And I think the change we're going to see is probably going to be critical to how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, uh, survives and improves as a Manchester United manager. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that these rumours that are coming out about a back five or a change in system, they're obviously happening because these rumours will be coming from coaches or players who are telling people who are then feeding it out into the media as it always works. Um, and I think that you know, Solskjaer has to change things up. I think if we come back against Leicester, he can't pick McTominay and Fred anyway, 
But if he could pick McTominay and Fred and we didn't win that game, then I think the patience will run thin. I think that the international break in many ways has rescued Solskjaer because... Um, and this happened to Mourinho a couple of times before he did get the sack in the December. The international break just seemed to help him out. There was one just before, I think we played Newcastle before an international break and he won the game, but there was talk about him being sacked no matter what and it didn't happen. And I think with Solskjaer, this international break, it puts the handbrake on everything. It, you know, the, the, There's a lot of frustration about the Villarreal win, how lucky we were, the Villa um, loss, the Everton draw. And if you think about it, if we'd gone straight into a game against Leicester and then Atalanta and Liverpool, that could have gone a bad way. The fact that he's had two weeks to you know, reset, take some time out, look at it and, and utilise this mini break, I definitely think that there will be some self-reflecting from Oli. And I think he'll go back to what he was trying and intending to do in the summer, which is to go with a system that, utilize, that utilises the one midfielder and the, the more advanced player. And I think with... Without uh, Fred in the team, I expect Paul Pogba to come into that team. And I'd be very surprised if he didn't. He played that role fantastically well for France the other night and has done consistently. He's not a left winger. Marcus Rashford's going to come back into that role. And Pogba should then drop into the midfield. And I think automatically that will make United a better side. Because I think Paul Pogba from the midfield makes us a better side if you stick the right, right player with him. And therefore, I don't see United continually playing this holding uh two that we've seen with McTominay and Fred um, he may well go with a Scott McTominay in this role he might do he might do um, obviously Fred can't play there against Leicester he can do in every other game he'll be back from international duty then but I definitely think we're going to see this I don't think we're going to see McTominay and Fred anymore because I think Ollie pretty much realises now two things about McTominay and Fred one that they don't work well together and two that people are sort of using those two players as a symbolisation of his run as a Manchester United manager. A very pragmatic, you know, energy vibe first ahead of quality in football. And Tom and Fred have become that. And I've always said, look, you don't need to bench both players. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you would. Um, but there might be a place for one of them in the team, but collectively not together. And I think that's what we're going to see. And I think this rumours coming out about a back five or a back three... Um, I don't see that happening. I don't. I don't. I think, as I said, something like that would be really drastic and really desperate. But I do see something, you know, different coming out of the midfield because it has to. You can't just keep doing what we've been doing this season. It's not. It's not been good enough. And I think so many of our points this season have been because of the midfield that he, he needs to remove the problem and um, improve it. So. Look, that's probably what I think. And actually, I must just say, I've put Jaden Sancho in the team. It's probably going to be Mason Greenwood, if we're honest. Mason Greenwood, on form at the moment, probably gets that spot. I think longer term, I would like to see Jaden Sancho develop. I thought he played quite well against Everton. I'd like to see Sancho getting more time off the right. He always seems to be playing off the left. But I think in the short term, he probably is going to stick with Greenwood. And that's probably going to be his team. Now, obviously, for me, I still think... You're asking Scott McTominay to do a role that, you know, he's not used to doing. This is Manchester United and we are basically asking a player to do a very important job who can't do the job. Um, you know, it's like getting a carpenter to come and um, put your carpets down. Well, it says carpet. It says carpet in it, does it? No, it's carpen, not carpet. He's not a carpenter. He's a carpenter. Carpenters, they mess around with wood. They don't, you know, wood! They, they, you know, he plays up front for for, for Burnley, a car, carpenter, not a carpenter. And I think that's what we're doing with McTominay and Fred. We're, we're trying to get them to play in a role that we think they can do that's not actually their role. So for me, as I've said many, many times, I think Oli could send a big statement out after the international break because you could just put Nemanja Matic into that role. And I think that that would revolutionise Manchester United. He's not on international duty. Um, he's quite clearly our best centre defensive midfielder. And that team, to me, would offer hope for United. It would offer hope and change. You know, I don't think people would be shouting Ollie out if he picked that team and it did really well. I really don't. I think if that team does really well, it would do really good. But the interesting news about Matic is, and I've spoken to a couple of people about this over the last sort of two or three weeks, but literally a few days ago, I'm really intrigued by it. And, and, and we don't get anybody asking the press conference about Matic. No, nobody asks about it. So, you know, obviously, 
there are people that I've, I've, I've built relationships with over the last few years. And in relation to Nemanja Matic, I spoke to somebody, um, it, was, it was, in fact, it was the post person who told me when Ahmad signed that he was tearing it up. Um, so a good bit of information that was and other bits around the actual training and things like that. In relation to Matic, what was told is, and it's, it's, it's not new news, but it's, it's concerning news, is that Oli likes Matic, likes having him around, but he's almost boxed off in the Mata category now, where they like having Matic and Mata around because of the experience they've got and they're good to have around for the younger lads, but they're not seen as players that are ever going to be first-team players in Oli's eyes. They're almost in that role. They're almost like half Carrick, half McTominay. Like, they're half coach, half player. And that's how Ollie treats Mata and Matic. Um, the funny thing is that I was told that Mata's not actually overly happy about that because Mata actually signed the contract thinking he'd play more games and not just to be a coach on the coaching ground. Or, you know, so Mata's not particularly happy about it because he could have been playing in Spain retiring. Um but Matic, again, probably not particularly happy about it, but he's not really seen as a first-teamer. And when I developed that conversation, I did say, is it because he just can't play 90 minutes anymore? And I was told, well, well, well he can't. Like, it's very clear that he can't play two games a week. You know, what I, was, what I was told is it would be hard for Matic to play 90 minutes one Saturday and then 90 minutes the next because he does run out of gas after an hour. And the question, therefore, is, very sadly, why is he at the club? It's such a frustrating thing to have a team like that and know that Matic, as a holding midfielder with Pogba next to him and Bruno, is a very, very good midfield. But if Nemanja Matic hasn't got the legs to do it anymore, he shouldn't be here. We're not a charity. And it confuses fans because you get stuck in this situation where, why are we picking, why are we picking McTominay and Fred? Why are we always picking McTominay and Fred? We should be picking Matic. But if we can't pick Matic because he can only play an hour, that's... A fact, like if he can't, if Matic can't play ninety minutes, he can't play ninety minutes, and then you're like, well, Fred and Pogba doesn't work, McTominay and Pogba doesn't work because they don't provide the protection Pogba needs, so therefore you start playing McTominay and Fred together, at the um, and sacrifice a Pogba or a Donny in the midfield because they're basically half and half. McTominay and Fred basically together give you a one decent CDM, so you sacrifice your your number eight to play two number threes, really, who are, which makes a number six. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, that, that's that's sort of a convoluted way of telling you, but the, the, the frustration is that Matic should be playing for United, but the feeling is, and the story is, that he can't. So you're there like, why, why is he here? Um, and look, there's nothing more I would like to see than Nemanja Matic come into the team for the next few games, because I think that team would provide us with a real change uh, that Oli needs and some real momentum. But it's not going to happen, is it, if what we're hearing is true? And then if it did happen, imagine if Matic did come into the team and started playing really, really well. We'd be sat there scratching our head going, so when Oli took over as interim, he played Matic, Herrera and Pogba and we played really well. Uh, just before Covid, he played Matic and Fred and it worked. After Covid, Matic, Pogba and Bruno took us from like, was it sixth to third? And it worked really well. All of Oli's best periods have been with Matic in the midfield. So if Matic still can play week in, week out, why is he not used him for the last year? And the reality is it, it will be because Oli doesn't trust him to do it anymore because he's not got the legs anymore. But it's a problem. It's a problem. And I suppose when you look at it like that, the only way to solve that problem is to do that or to do that. Um, and to be honest with you, if I'm picking between the two, I'm probably going to do that. But the problem is there, whether it's Fred, whether it's McTominay next to Pogba, it's there, and um, but I, I think there will be a tactical switch. I think the tactical switch will be he has to play Pogba in the midfield. He has to do it, and therefore it will be Pogba and Matt, uh, Pogba and McTominay or Pogba and Fred, and that will be the tactical switch. I do not believe these rumours that we're going to go to a back five because, as I said, you go to a back five. I mean, Rashford, Greenwood, Sancho, Martial. There's too many attacking wide players that get benched with a 5-3-2. So I don't see it happening, or a 3-5-2. But I do think what is probably happening is that rumours are coming out about work that Oli is going to change things up. And I think he will change things up, but I don't see it being a back five. I think it will be 
more of what we were meant to get in the summer, which is one holding midfielder with Pogba back into the midfield and Rashford off the left. To which I would say this, why did we put Pogba on the left until Rashford was injured if we were going to put him in the midfield anyway? Literally, if Pogba was going to be a midfielder when Rashford came back, Pogba should have been a midfielder when Rashford was out. Because Sancho, Martial, Lingard, they can all play off the left. And Pogba could have played in the midfield. You don't take one of your most important midfielders out of the midfield and put them on the wing because Rashford's out. Midfield is far more important than a left winger because that's where all the action is. So very weird what how we've treated Pogba. But I believe that the new change of Oli will be to get Pogba centrally because he's got to go for it now. Can't have any more dull draws. Um, I'm sure if you offered Oli four grind out 1-0 wins in the next four Premier League games, he'd bite your hand off. But that's not going to happen and he's going to have to change things. And the way you change things is to get your best players on the pitch. And he's got to get Rashford in and he's got to get Pogba in. And that means Pogba's going to have to go back into the midfield. So that's what I think the tactical change will be. But get in the comments. Would you like to see something like this? Would you like to see us play a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2, whatever you want to call it? Or do you think we've got to stick with the back four and the two midfielders or the three midfielders in a 6-8-10 formation? Thanks everyone for watching. Make sure you smash a like on the video and subscribe bottom right hand corner. I'm going to be live later on tonight on That's Football with a Fury versus Wilder watch along if you want to join me for that. I'll be on the energy drinks for sure and England versus Andorra at 8 o'clock on That's Football as well. So double watch alongs coming up for you. Make sure you subscribe, smash a like on the video and as I say, get in the chat below. What do you think these rumours about a tactical change from Oli will result in? Do you think he would go as extreme as a back five? Or do you think it's just going to be a modification of the back four with one holding midfielder? Or do you think he'll just stick with what we have been doing and basically stare down the barrel of the sack? We'll have to wait and see. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you all soon.